welcome to Kelly's Kitchen. This is our second installment of Cooking with Kelly. And today we're going to make one of my daughter's most favorite meals. She requests this one on a regular basis, and it is just basically cracker crumb chicken. Now, you can make this out of anything that you like. I use crackers. Um, you can use club crackers. You can use Ritz. And one thing that I really like that I have used in the past are Cheez-Its. Now, my daughter doesn't like Cheez-Its. She only likes regular crackers in hers. Um, so, I was an only child, so I didn't have to eat anything I didn't want to eat. So, you know, one of the things we won't learn how to make on here is any form of bean whatsoever. Maybe a green one, but no other kind of bean is going to go down in this case. Matter of fact, they're not even allowed in the house unless they're refried beans and we had to order out Mexican food, and that's only because it is a um, coronavirus allowance that I have had to be forced to make. So that's the only kind of beans that get in the house. And um, I've got two kids and I raised two only children. So of course one of my only children, she loves the cracker crumb with the premium crackers. And that's how we make it. So let's get started with cracker crumb chicken and mashed potatoes. Usually just grab like a cup. And now I'm gonna go ahead and pull the screen down so you guys can see what's going on because the comments that I got from the last one was that you guys couldn't see what I was doing. So let's just bring this down. There we go. I'm just gonna take this right here, kind of beat it up a little bit. If you get too carried away, you will bust out this pack of crackers. Now, what I'm gonna do here, this is gonna be my bowl, I'm gonna put it all in, but I've got just a little food processor. I'm gonna take it and just show you real quickly how I do this, and then we'll fill this bowl up. But I'll put some down in that. Take that good stuff out, pour it in there, and what you see is that we're going to have this in place of flour. Once again, back in my head, so we are going to chop up the crackers, we're going to get these all together, and then we're going to go on to step number two, once we get them all blended up. Alright, so we're just going to use some little chicken cutlets, and um, or whatever you want to call those, the little chicken loins. And what I usually do with this right here is I'll add a little milk and some seasoning. And I'm going to wash my hands. I'm setting off camera actually to wash some hands. But I'm going to pour a little milk into this bowl. I'm going to get a big spoon so I can kind of get that milk around. And you can use buttermilk. Um, it just never fails unless I know for sure what I'm doing if I've got buttermilk or not to be able to do this with. So just any kind of milk. Once again, my Adolph's tenderizer, that's one of my favorite things. I'm just gonna take the lid off of this and sprinkle quite a bit of that flavor in there. It's one of my favorites. Um, I'm gonna throw down a little garlic powder for flavor. And last but not least, some onion powder. Oh yeah. I just kind of put all of that in there, mix this up really good so it kind of gets into that milk. Because I've found if I take my chicken and I spice it and I stick it in the milk, um, it pretty much loses its spices. So um, some people may want to take this and let that sit a day ahead of time and overnight in the refrigerator. Um, I usually will do it just um, in the process of making it. So we got our main dish right here. We've got the chicken cutlets, we've got our cracker crumbs that we've um, food processed up real good. I'm going to put the milk back. Now, I'm going to set this off to the side. I'm going to let that chicken just kind of marinate a little bit in that. I'm going to wash my hands one more time over here. And bring back into the picture, we're going to have mashed potatoes to go with this. So we've already peeled these potatoes, and I'm going to take these fine potatoes and just slice them in half one way, half again, and another time. So I'm just going to cut those up. You can make these size whatever you like. Just depends. These are the little yellow potatoes. This is what we usually use are the yellow potatoes around the house. And uh, they're not very big. If you're cooking for a, uh, a big crowd, you're going to want to use a little bit bigger potato because you could wear yourself out peeling these little dinky potatoes. So cutting all these up right quick. 
in half and half again. Really just, uh, just about quartering it both ways. So I'm quartering a half. So I take one of the halves, quarter it. Now I've already got some water over here boiling on the stove, so I'm gonna take these now, and I've got these, I'm gonna run these over to the stove and get them in the water. Already got a pan of water boiling over here, and I'm gonna slide those in oh so carefully, so not to splash water up. Try to slide those in the side of that pan just a little bit. And uh, when I put my water in there, I usually put salt in it and get that. So now that we've got these into the water, we're gonna put that on a medium to high heat and I'm gonna let those boil and we're gonna get our chicken ready to go into the pan. So as you can see, I've got a pan over here already. I'm gonna go ahead and get that pan started. And I usually let it sit on a pretty high heat. I use olive oil for just about everything that I cook with. So I've got some olive oil member mark from Sam's. And I'm gonna pour in enough to cover the bottom of the pan and maybe up just, just a fraction. I mean, not just a whole lot. Let's see if we can, let's see if we can get down here and see this. See how much oil I've got in there. You've got your oil in here now, and we've got it up the sides just a little bit, not too much oil. And one of the things that I really had to learn when I started uh, cooking, and I still am learning, I by no means know a whole lot, but I sure like to make things as quick and as simple as possible. What I have learned is when you heat up your pan before you put something in it, you need to get your pan good and hot. So if you uh, take chicken and you're frying chicken or you're frying even these chicken cutlets like we're doing tonight or these little loins, the little strips, um, and you put them into your oil and it's not hot yet, then what you do is make them soak in that grease and all they do is soak up that grease and you're gonna make them even more greasy than they are from just being a piece of fried chicken. And one of the ways that I can kind of tell when a skillet is ready, um, it's hot, I'll take just a little pinch of some of this and I'll put it in there and if it really begins to, to bubble and things like that, you know that it is ready. So we're gonna get our stuff set up over here and get ourselves ready. I just do my little assembly line, chicken into the breading, flip it both sides. I'm gonna show you how I do that, and bring the camera in so we can take a good look. All right, now you can see from a bird's eye view, put a little bit of this in there and I see that it begins to look like it's just getting warm enough. I'm going to turn it down a little bit because I don't want to cook my chicken on high, but I want to make sure my grease is good and hot. I'm going to turn it down to, on mine, I've got a zero to 10. I turned it down between an eight and nine, somewhere right in there. Then we just take one of these and I make sure that I get it all down into that milk real good. I pat it down, flip it over, pat it down again. Now I'll use my fingers to pull this out of there so that I can get it and I'm gonna lay that down in that grease. And if that grease starts to sizzle like that, that means, as you can see, that grease is warm and ready. So let's put these in. And what you'll find is, you'll have to do a couple of rounds of these chickens. I've got my my paper towel's back here. I've got this little, it's actually a, it's actually a cookie cooler. I set that in a pan, I lay my paper towels on it, and then when I pull my chicken out, I'm gonna set those up on that. And uh, what I normally do is grab a fork, different from what I'm using over here, and uh, when they get good and brown, flip those over. These are cooking up real nice, let me tell you. And for those little sizes of chicken, it won't take long for those to cook. I'll cook these, flip them over, they're good and brown. Now if you've got some thicker pieces, sometimes I cook them up just a little bit longer, but we're only talking about, oh, about three, three minutes or so, just a couple of minutes per side. But I'll let these cook for a little bit longer. I'll pull those out. And um, at some point, I'll cut one just to make sure if I've got one that's filled a little thick to make sure that um, 
It's down the middle, because the last thing you want is uncooked chicken. And as you can see over to the side, our potatoes are still cooking over there. I'm gonna grab a spoon real quick and just stir those. Um, these little fellows, they're still pretty hard, but when they get really soft and they're kind of a little bit smushy is when you want to turn those off and you don't want to let them sit in the water because if you let them sit in the water for a while, the only thing that'll happen to those, they'll get even smushier and you won't have very good um, smashed, mashed potatoes. Mashed potatoes. Mashed potatoes. And uh, I'll turn those off and we'll drain them and then I'm going to show you a way to make some fantastic mashed potatoes. We're going to have a little bread that's going to go with this as well. so. Um, we're going to process through this and you'll see how it all happens. One thing you do got to be a little careful of is adjusting your heat to the process of this because sometimes you can fool around, turn it down, and cause things to slow down cooking. Anytime when you're cooking fried chicken, good hot grease is going to be your key to a great flavor. All right, I've grabbed a fork real quick and I'm going to just kind of check these potatoes to see if they're getting soft. And uh, if the fork is able to poke into those real easy, especially if it comes apart, that means those babies are ready. I'm going to go ahead and turn those off. They're still just a little bit stiffer than I like. That way they'll give me time to finish this chicken. All right, now our potatoes are finished. I've got this little strainer. You may have a different pot that strains. We're going to grab our potatoes, and I'm going to go over here right now to the sink, and we're going to get these things strained so that we can start the process of making some wonderful mashed potatoes. All right, for our mashed potatoes, I've always had one of these potato smashers. It's funny because I use this for ground beef for everything. When I put ground beef in, I want it smushed up for taco meat and things like that. This is what I use. But um, for this purpose, I'm going to use about two tablespoons of butter and I'm going to use a stick butter. I think this particular one is a sweet cream butter. One of the uh, secret ingredients that um, a lot of people put in is a little bit of cream cheese into their mashed potatoes. I'm not going to put any in for this particular one. I'm gonna get that butter down in there so it can begin to melt. I'm gonna smush those potatoes up. Those were good and ready. And we're just gonna pour in a little bit of milk and apologize for the fact that I don't measure when you're baking, you have to be precise in how your measurements are. But when you're cooking, you know, it's like, you take a little dash of this and a dash of that. I'm going to put a little salt and we'll put a little pepper in that. And we'll stir these babies up. I see that the butter has melted. And they're creamy, but not quite enough milk. Just a little bit more milk I'll put in there. That makes for a, a potato about like that right there. And I guarantee you those babies right there. Mmm. Perfect. All right, and while we were away on a break, I threw a little bit more butter in there because I like extra butter. So understand that the process of what we made tonight, I had uh, five little yellow potatoes that I made. It's just gonna be me and Heather. We'll have some leftovers um, for Eli when he gets back home. But um, we ended up with 10 chicken fingers and, and uh, just a little pot of potatoes here that you can see. And I'm gonna plate this up little mashed potatoes on there. Take and put chicken. I'm gonna bring this down. I got a couple of pieces of bread on there. There you go. Dinner is served. So just a real quick recap. I just want to say thank you for uh, joining me today. We did cracker crumb chicken with mashed potatoes and just a side roll. Something that's quick and easy. My daughter is one of her most favorite meals. You can cook this no matter how you want to do that, whether you take a whole chicken breast and you slice it up into strips and, and put it in milk and bread, bread it and then fry it, or if you take the um, chicken loins, the little strips that are already done, um, 
A lot of times with those, something I didn't show you because I had already done it on the chicken, but they've got that little white um, piece of tendon at the very top of those, something I just deathly hate. Um, I take that and I take a pair of scissors and I cut it off of all of them. Um, so mashed potatoes, cracker crumb chicken, bon appetit.